Winter is coming to Alberta's Rocky Mountains and the bears are getting ready. They're gorging themselves on berries and protein-rich foods, rushing to build up a thick layer of fat. The calories they consume today will help the bears get through the winter. In the skies above, Gord Stenhouse is also racing to finish his work before the winter comes. We're in the period of time where bears are uh, just going to head into hibernation, so they're looking for den sites. 21 bears in and around Jasper National Park were fitted in the spring with the latest tracking collars. Each battery-powered unit records information about the bears' movements. If the grizzlies head into the dens before Stenhouse can get to them, the batteries will die and the data will be lost forever. These collars are programmed to get six locations a day, so every four hours this collar turns on and records the bear's location. And this falls off. Stenhouse has already retrieved five collars, packed full of important information. The new technology has revolutionized bear research. Historically, we put on what are called VHF collars. To find the bear, you'd have to get in an airplane and fly it. You might get, you know, uh, maybe two or three locations a month. You might have a total of, say, between 15 and 20 data points for a bear for a year. With a full year's data set on one of our GPS collars, you can have up to 1,000 data points. Even when the weather's bad, you know where that bear is in the morning and at night. The study is called the Foothills Model Forest Grizzly Bear Project. The goal of the project is to help scientists and land managers understand how bears and humans are getting along. The information they're gathering may change the way this area is developed. This mine is a perfect example. It cuts across part of a traditional grizzly bear range, and it means that bears have to walk the long way around to get through the area. Both male and female bears live on both sides of the mine. If they aren't free to cross back and forth, their choice of mate is cut in half. Everyone assumes development like this is bad for bears, but no one has been able to study these situations carefully enough to know for sure, until now. I don't know about breaking preconceived notions. I'm hoping that what we have is a better understanding of how bears respond to human activities. 